So that's uh, um, that kind of covers the, the first part, which is spray by dispersions, and I, I see here um, eating up a fair amount of time. Um, so for the second part, the, uh, the dosage forms and suspensions, I'm going to probably go through this a little more quickly. I'm obviously happy to, to field a few more questions if, if I gloss over something at the end. Kind of a key point that, that I want to make here, particularly about dosing is, well, both suspensions and immediate um, release forms is, is SEDs are, are quite amenable to, to both suspensions and um, tablets and even capsules, although uh, it, it can be done wrong, and it can be done wrong in such a, a way that you get, if you will, a false negative, where you're getting poor um, disintegration, dissolution, and, of course, poor um, absorption, um, which isn't necessarily that, that you have a bad formulation or that the SCDs won't work, but simply they weren't kind of been presented in, in the correct way. And so that's something, uh, of course, to be to be warned against and, and that, that um, we'd like to avoid um, kind of false negatives. And then probably just briefly touch on a little bit um, the inclusion of dispersions in, in modified dosage forms or um, controlled release. So for immediate release, uh, again, STDs are quite amenable to suspensions, either for animal um, you know, efficacy, um, safety, tox kind of studies. Uh, as well as um, clinical trials as a powder in a bottle. Um, we do very often, um, in our hands, uh, use an immediate release tablet approach. A uh, rapidly disintegrating tablet is, is our usual approach for um, STDs in the solid dosage form. And then uh, they can be placed in capsules, um, certainly, although, although I'll sound um, a, a few notes there, just, just again, that, that um, if, if one isn't careful, you can get some poor, poor performance from a capsule, particularly that's, that's an artifact of how they're prepared rather than an indication that the SDD won't work. Um, and, then, and then dispersions can be put into a number of different controlled release dosage forms. And, and we do this here, uh, including an osmotic tablet um, or a swallowable core tablet, as we call them, or um, spray layer dispersion, which is kind of a, a bead-based approach, um, which has, is a pretty flexible platform. Um, and then, uh, in principle, they could be put in a matrix tablet, although that's, that's not a, a method that we practice often. Um, so for dosing of suspensions, again, um, SCDs are well suited for this route, and uh, it's very nice for animal studies, so um, see the FTC, PK, TOC studies, um, and, and uh, um, in some cases, STDs, um, we, our clients have used them for, for TOC studies where they might even have a crystalline form that's uh, sufficient for absorption at fairly low doses, but, but they need uh, an increased, um, increased solubility. Um, platform for talk studies alone. So it's a nice, uh, robust platform for doing this. Um, typically, uh, we use an aqueous methicil A vehicle, although um, other vehicles, other aqueous vehicles can certainly be used. And when done properly, um, it's, it's pretty difficult to get um, a suspension stability on the order of a day to a week. Um, of course, again, this is a high energy dosage form, which is, is part of the performance advantage. So as such, as an aqueous suspension, you typically do not have infinite um, stability, and so that's something that, that you need to um, to test and, and, and formulate around making sure that you do have a stable suspension. But it's quite difficult to have them um, at, you know, useful for a day to a week, um, which is nice for us for talk studies. And, and um, depending on the, the loading of the drug in, in polymer, um, you can see some of the, the um, typical del maximum deliverable doses down here, and if you have a, a, a pretty high uh, drug loading in your SCD, you can get up into the, the many hundreds of, of makes per case kind of um, doses, you know, for using tox. So as far as preparing the suspension, again, this is something I want to touch on. Um, there's a number of, of potential ways to do this. Um, we use a mortar and a pestle method that I'll describe uh, in more detail on the next slide. To, to make a nice uniform suspension that, that um, is, is easily be easily syringable to give you a uniform dose. Um, there's a couple other potential ways to do it, and, and some of them do not work so well. And, and I should say, particularly in our experience here, is, is most often with HPNCS STDs, but, but with others as well, um, it's really best you know, in our hands to, to make a suspension the, the way that's shown here. Um, so it says the, the right way and the other ways. Um, so uh, uh, the way that we recommend making these suspensions is you have your, your STD powder in a, in a mortar and pestle, and you bring the vehicle in slowly, kind of drop-wise. Um, it doesn't take a lot of force or anything, but just, just with some nice movement um, there in the mortar and pestle. 
and you form kind of a uniformly wetted paste. And this is really key um, to, to just uniformly wet the SDD. Then you can bring in the rest of the vehicle and, um, and, and mix it further, and then you have a syringable or pourable suspension. Um, if you don't do that, if you just kind of dump it in and, and say try to vortex or use a stir bar, um, oftentimes what you can get is, is kind of a, a, a cow eye or a, a situation where you get non-uniform wetting. You get some kind of gelling and some kind of dry, dry, grainy or chalky suspensions. And it can take a really long time to break up those, break those up and get a uniform um, suspension. So, so we really recommend against those methods. Um, we do sometimes other people will use uh, homogenizers. Um, and uh, I know that, that people sometimes have good luck with that, so um, that's a method that can sometimes work. But, but we recommend routinely, um, particularly at an early stage, using this kind of mortar and pestle approach. We've had a lot of good luck with it. Um, and, and I should mention, this discussion is particularly around fairly high loading or, or high dosage regime um, kind of presentations. If, if you're going for a, a powder or a bottle kind of approach, um, you know, with for an efficacious human dose, typically the concentrations are much lower, and simple shaking um, of the bottle with the vehicle and, and the powder will suffice. But when you're going for a high loading, you, you really want to, to guard against these kind of poor wetting. And again, this is some of the things that can lead to, to false negatives if, if they're done improperly. Um, uh, immediate release tablets is, is kind of our typical way that we approach uh, solid dosage forms. Um, so let's describe it a little bit here. Uh, most often, we will use a dry granulation approach, um, so a, a roller compaction in a milling, um, followed by compression or, or kind of simulating that at a small scale um, to, to formulate a, a rapid disintegrating tablet. And it's kind of the same idea here with, with the solid dosage form as, as with the suspension. What you want to do is quickly uniformly wet and disperse those SDDs um, so that you don't get that kind of gelling and, and uncontrolled slow disintegration and dissolution. And so, We've had a lot of good uh, success using this methodology. Um, and as it says here, it is quite typical to get 50% or even up to 70% of the tablet mass to be an SDD. Um, HBMCS SDDs here, again, are, are actually particularly um, beneficial in that um, it's a little bit easier to get good uh, disintegration in the gastric medium. Uh, because the polymer is not soluble in the gastric, it's not wanting to kind of rapidly gel and set up before you get that nice disintegration. So. It's not to say you can't put other STDs in, the, in an IR tablet with other polymers, but sometimes um, it can be a bit more of a challenge to get uh, the rapid disintegration that you're after. And there's some example data here in the lower right that shows um, comparing in, in a clinical trial um, STD suspension or a powder or bottle versus a, a, an IR tablet, and you can see there's um, no difference between the data. And so it's quite difficult to be able to recover that performance of the suspension in a tablet. Um, SDDs can be put in capsules um, and get good performance, although, again, I would, would sound a, a, just a bit of a note of caution here. If one is to, um, particularly in the case of HBMCS or the other, um, uh, some of the other kind of cellulosic type of polymers, we just stuff the SDD into a capsule and, and maybe kind of tamp it in there. What you tend to get oftentimes is, is again, kind of some gelling, some slow dissolution and disintegration and, and performance quite a bit worse than what you would expect from it. Uh, you know, the suspension itself, and that's what's shown um, here on the lower left. Um, now, you can formulate around that um, with, again, the use of, of maybe some disintegrant or even some granulation and then placing them into a capsule, and, and we've certainly had uh, luck doing that here. Um, so it's not to say that STDs can't be placed in capsules, um, and it's not to say that some other STDs, um, particularly with, with relatively hydrophilic drugs, Sometimes just putting the SCD right in the capsule does, does work adequately, but at the very least, obviously, you want to test that in vitro and make sure that you're not um, altering the performance of the STD. And, and it, it's quite typical um, in our hands to see that just placing them in a capsule alone without any additional excipients um, can lead you to some, some poor performance than you might expect. Um, I, I think we probably want to get to the, the question and answer session uh, quickly here. Um, but. Uh, Maybe just briefly, I'll, I'll touch on putting dispersions in some controlled release or modified release formulations. Um, so we do practice here a, a swallowable core technology, which is, is similar to the ALSA um, osmotic or push-pull systems that, that have been, you can see in the literature or, or in commercial manufacturer elsewhere. Um, and the way that technology works is if it's a bilayer tablet, where you have a drug layer, which, which in the drug layer can be either crystalline drug or dispersion, um, along with some other excipients. 
uh, and then there's a spoiler layer. Um, so again, it's a bilayer tablet, and then and then the tablet is coated with a semi-permeable coating, which um, which you can tr control the water permeability. And there's a laser drill hole on the drug side, and so as water comes in again, which is controlled by that coating, um, what happens is the spoiler layer swells, and it it sort of extrudes or pumps the drug layer out through that laser hole. And what you get is a very nice linear um, release rate, which is what's shown on the plots here. Um, and then you can, as it says, tune that release rate um, by the composition and thickness of, of that coating. So it's a very nice, very controllable uh, technology for getting kind of zero order release rate. I mean, and it can be, in this case, um, released in a solubilized form. Um, so that's all great. The, the one, you know, potential disadvantage or, or the thing of note that of course, with the bilayer um, and some of the other excipients, you are minimizing the, the total drug load that you can have in there. So it's, it's not ideal if you, if you have a high dose situation. Um, but for a relatively low dose, or you want a really controlled um, release profile, this is a great technology. Um, we also, uh, oh, here's some, uh, some data, some uh, in vitro and in vivo data using um, a swallowable core tablet with SDD. Um, comparing to a suspension. So there's in vitro data on the left here, disso data. Um, I would point out it's maybe a little bit not quite apples to apples here in that the, the green or the, the tablet is a sink condition, whereas the suspension was placed in a non-sink. But of course the point is you get very rapid dissolution for a suspension and much more controlled slower dissolution for the tablet. Um, and then you can see the corresponding uh, in vivo data, and this is dog data by the way, um, with a 25% active um, HPMCS dispersion. And you can see the difference between the, the fairly rapid um, absorption that, and, then, and then elimination that you get for the SCD versus quite a bit longer um, absorption profile for the SCT. Um, so it's a nice technology when you need that niche of, of both solubilization and controlled release, particularly if the dose is fairly low. Um, we also practice spray layer dispersions quite a bit, which is a fluid bed um, approach, so you're, you're now in a fluid bed, um, spray layering uh, a dispersion onto a, a bead. So typically you'd use either um, sugar um, nuperyl cores or, or uh, uh, cellulose core, and you can put a layer of dispersion uh, on that. And then in addition, on top of that, uh, one can put uh, controlled release layers, like say CAPEG or Epicel HPMC. Um, of course, you can put an enteric layer, et cetera. So a lot of flexibility in this platform in, in terms of you know, how you can construct the, the layers of the beads, and we practice this fairly often. And, and then these are, of course, very amenable to, to placing them right into a capsule. Um, and so this is an approach that we use quite often, again, to get the, if we want that combination of solubilization and control release. Um, so I think I'll, I'll, I'll end it there. And um, again, thank you for your interest and your time. Um, happy to answer uh, a number of questions now. Um, I would. I guess point out that, that um, myself and a colleague, um, Dana Sattel, are going to have an additional webinar um, in the not too distant future on uh, September 29th, which uh, um, if you're interested to hear more, certainly uh, contact um, Phoenix Ivers at, at the contact information below. Or again, if you'd like to contact um, um, me offline with, with questions or, or what have you, um, you can see my contact information there and I'd, I'd um, certainly be receptive to that. So. Again, thanks for your time, and I'm um, happy to entertain uh, some questions if there are some. Thank you very much, Corey. Yes, we're moving into the Q&A part, and I'd like to invite our audience to continue sending questions or comments by using the questions panel on the right side of the screen.